and whether the round fired each round was necessary and whether other options were available to the officer in lieu, in lieu of using deadly force. Again, we will base that decision on the information that the officers had at the time of the shooting. Be, as I get ready to show this vehicle to, or this video to you, I, I'd like to warn you um, that this video is graphic, as is any video of a shooting or use of force, and uh, can be difficult to watch and may cause some of you to cringe, as it did me when the first few times that I watch it, and even today. I'm going to uh, play the video all the way through. And then during the second showing, I will try to stop it at particular points to highlight those areas that I commented on earlier. And so at this time, if you would please show the video. There's going to be about a 8 to 10 second lapse from when the video starts to when the vehicle will come from this direction and you'll see some smoke coming from above the street. I believe it's about 9.50. Eastbound on Shields, <coughs> approaching Sunnyside. And there's the pickup turning smoke a little bit above the wind. Uh, sound. Can you activate the sound, please? and pause it for a second. Is the bar on, Chief? Oh, yeah, the power bar and the second sound bar. What's that? The right, yeah, that right there, is that on? The sound there should be a button there to turn it on. It's right in the middle. Yeah. You want me to come up there? There you go. Get back to the 950, please. Severely from the ear and maybe no suspects, RGLA, um, five individuals blessing towards chestnut. Um, RP stopped to ask if the male This point, he's getting ready to pull into the Chevron station. Out 
No, I didn't tell you to get out. Hey, let me see both of your hands. Let me see both of your hands. Let me, let me see your hands. Get both of your hands out. Left hands out. Both of your hands. Officer, then call for your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Both hands, both hands. Now we're still. Both your hands. Other hand, right hand up. Right hand up. Video will get better. Skip. Skip. Lay down on the ground. Lay down. Hands for the waistband there. Let's the dog go. Let's do your hands. Hands behind his back, Good. one hand. Stop! Stop reaching! Get on the ground now! Stop! Get down on the ground now! Get your fucking ass on the ground! Stop! Get the police department! Drop whatever you have in your hand! Stop! Drop bullets, you're gonna get shot, man! Get Stop. down on the ground now! Get your fucking ass on the ground now! Get your hands up! Get your hands! And then he reaches. Get your hands up! Don't reach for your hands! Quit reaching for what you got! Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up! Dude, if you reach one more time, you won't get shot again. Stop! Dude! Hey, yeah, I think so. The signal's being blocked by you guys right here, so if you can. Come up here a little bit. Yeah. The signal's in there. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Okay. We good? <coughs> okay, this. You want to start it again at 940? Yeah. Or 950? Or actually go to. Can you guys uh, warn or uh, warn? Where's the signal coming? It's coming right there. Yes, please. <coughs> this is going to be the original call, but you don't need to see. But watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Would you stand over here, please? Thank you. Are you going to talk with this one, Chief? Yes. Can you use your mic? Are you going out here? So he's accelerating now. The pickup had already uh, pulled out around the corner. He's going eastbound at this point. Officers accelerating to catch up. Thank you. 
incidents on the assault victim. Male victim is bleeding severely from the ear. That's a separate call. No suspects are GOA. Um, five individuals last seen. Torch Chestnut. Um, RP stopped to ask if the male needed help. He refused. No further. Continues eastbound. The suspects were all wearing red clothing. Handgun out thinking this was at this point, this may be the guy related to the call. Three Henry, looks like the vehicle's going over into the gas station and Armstrong and Shields. Armstrong and Shields, advise if you want to use. Turn off the truck! Get your hands out the window! Both hands out the window. See one hand so goes out the left side. Door opens. Hey, let me see both your hands. Let me see both your hands. One hand goes out. The other one stays let inside. Let me see your hands. Get both your hands out. Both your hands. The officer called for three hand. units at that point. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Both hands, both hands. In the vehicle, hands minute, minute and 17 seconds. Both of your hands. Other hand, right hand up. Right hand up. Yep. Yep. Lay down on the ground! Lay down! You'll see right there, both hands go to the front towards the waistband area as he's walking away from the officer. Don't know why. He faces the officers, and then the right hand goes behind his back with the left hand up. And then he begins to walk towards the officer, periodically bringing the right hand out. And right there, there was something in his hand, according to what the officer said. They just did not know what that object was. Just stop! Stop leaving the ground! Again, hand goes behind the back with the left hand up as he gets to the front of the pickup towards the officer. Now you're going to see him start to back away. Now, stop! Get down on the ground now! Get your fucking ass on the ground! Stop! The police department! Drop whatever you have in your hand! Right there. And this is the next time he comes forward when you'll hear him make the statement. Stop! Stop! Get down on the ground now! Stop! Falls to the ground, it's about four Get seconds, your hands up. over. And right there he begins to reach with his right hand underneath the shirt into the waistband as described by the officer. The officer Don't fired the original hands. first two rounds fired that one as well. Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up! And right there, he reached under the shirt a second time. And it was at that time the second officer, who had not fired a round yet, fired the shotgun blast at him, the last shotgun. And it was when he was pulling the hand out. And that is the video of the first office, officer uh, on scene. We'll play the second video at this time for you. Uh, again, in its entirety, it's a very short video. For you to see. The sound, there's a 30 second buffer where you're not going to hear anything by the, uh, 
assisting officer who's armed with a shotgun, he comes up here. hear conversation about the canine. The canine officer was there, but the canine itself was in the vehicle. Our policy is if an individual is armed with a gun, the canine is not utilized in this, in this instance. Go ahead. I think we got a dog with us. Rebecca 11, 12. Get out of the car. Get out on the ground! Get down 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 on
Although I have uh, asked the investigators to expedite this investigation, as long as all physical evidence is returned to include the coroner's report and toxicology uh, results. The Internal Affairs Unit will conclude their investigation upon receipt of the District Attorney's findings, and then I'll make a decision at that time as to whether the use of deadly force and the actions of the officers <coughs> were within department policy. And I want you to know this, and this is my promise to the community. I promise you, I'm going to make the right decision. The right decision for the officers, the right decision for this community. One that is not based on political expediency. One that is not swayed by public opinion or the opinion of officers in this department or the department's labor union for the officers. I know that in cases like this, no matter what the decision is, there will be people that question, the people that will not support it. And I always know that in decisions that are this critical, you're not going to have everybody that supports it, not the officers, not the union, perhaps not the family, and maybe not even the community. But I promise you, I'll do the right thing in this investigation. I'm asking people to trust me to do that. I realize that other chiefs across this country, after making decisions like this, may face a vote of no confidence from their union, or they may lose the support of the community and the trust, depending on the outcome of that decision. In spite of all that, I will make the right decision for this city and for the officers involved based on what the officers knew at the time and based on our policy. With that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions you might have. You mentioned the third and fourth shots specifically. When you look at those and Dylan's down on the ground, the optics are bad, and then you have to question whether even if he is reaching into his waistband, whether he could capably actually pull something out and put them in danger at that moment. I mean, can you describe how you see that? Well, when I said earlier that the uh, that there are people that are going to have questions, especially about the last two rounds fired, I too have questions about the last two rounds that were fired. Were they based on a reasonable fear? Meaning, was that person capable of carrying out a threat to the officers? And was were those rounds absolutely necessary, or were there other options, alternatives? And those alternatives will be looked at. But it is premature today for me to make that decision. But I want members of this community to know that I will be looking at every single round that was fired individually to make sure that it was within the law, within policy. It was based on a reasonable fear and it was necessary. And um, again, I've had the luxury of watching this video approximately 40 times in my office and on the big screen. A luxury that those officers that night did not have. They didn't have a computer to look at. They were looking at it in real life. And so I have to remember that as well. But I also have to remember they're entrusted with a great deal of authority and power as police officers. In some cases, the authority to take a life. And when they exercise that authority, it has to be not only within the confines of the law, but it has to be within department policy and deemed to be reasonable and necessary, and that's what I will be looking at. You say, was this a traffic stop, or was it a felony stop because of the prior call? This was determined to be a, initially, it was going to be a traffic stop. Once the individual failed to yield, it escalated to the belief that perhaps this vehicle was involved, or the driver uh, was involved in the prior call, the call that they were still on, maybe armed, and at that point, it was became a high-risk stop for the officers as you see with the guns drawn. Were there any that, toxicology reports nope. on? High risk stop was uh, the length of the vehicles and their actions all within department policy because it would appear would not be within the policy of many law enforcement organizations. They would have handled it much differently. We, we are going to look at the tactics that were utilized by the officers and the decision that they made to leave their vehicle to go forward. I can tell you that the officer's interview regarding that question was that when he began to walk away, 
uh, well, initially when they began to approach, it was to get a better angle into the vehicle to be able to see uh, both hands. Even though they gave up a position of cover at a better observation point, that's what they said in the interview. The second one was when they made the decision to go forward, it was based on their decision that they did not want this individual to return to the truck, and they wanted to prevent that from occurring. But they also said that they thought that this individual may be preparing to run. And then when the individual turned and started walking toward them, you can see the officers retreat back towards their vehicle at some point and then utilize at least one officer at the rear of the pickup to take cover. But I can tell you, each and every one of those things are gonna be looked at. When, when we talk about whether or not the, the shooting was within policy, we also look at what led up to that shooting to determine whether or not there are things the officers could have done to avoid the shooting in the first place. Yeah. That in parts of the video, it appeared that he might be intoxicated. He uh, staggered like he was intoxicated, other times less so. Um, did the officers ever think that he was intoxicated and that's why he wasn't compliant? The officers uh, were not certain what his, what his state of mind was, what his level of intoxication or whether he was on drugs or, or what was going through this individual mind. Do you remember the officers had never made contact with Mr. Noble? In fact, they didn't know anything about him, with the exception of what they saw in that two minutes and 20 second encounter when he was in the truck after the vehicle stopped and his actions at that time and the comments that he made. They did not know who he was. They did not know if he had been drinking or using drugs. Uh, they were simply looking at his actions according to what they said in the interview. How much of the initial pursuit, I noticed a red curb there, no stopping zone. How much of that period was he driving through a no stopping zone? Uh, it was, um, to my knowledge, a very brief period of time. There were locations along the way on Shields that uh, the vehicle could have pulled over. I don't know what distance uh, or why he chose to stay in the number one lane. Uh, we, we won't know that. We just don't know that. Um, we know the back window was open, so he should have been able to hear the sirens. Uh, but we don't know why the decision was made not to pull over immediately. Okay, not the shot, could he have been reaching for his abdomen because he was shot in the abdomen? Uh, all of those things are going to be looked at um, in terms of, again, based on a reasonable officer at that time, what did they believe was occurring? Um, I guess someone now could look at it and say perhaps he was um, checking for a gunshot wound or maybe who knows why he was reaching under his shirt. I don't have those answers right now. Does a police officer expect that after they've shot someone, they are rational and can obey, continue to obey commands? That kind of doesn't make sense. Well, I believe any time somebody is, is shot, um, they have a different reaction, um, perhaps, than when they were, before they were shot. But there are some people that maybe react similar to the way they were, but that is difficult to say at this time. Um, but those are things we consider. Is that was this reasonable based on what he did when he was lying? Or could they have done something different? Part of the investigation. Sorry, excuse me, Chief. You mentioned that you had been planning on releasing this last week and then everything happened with Dallas. Does this, in some respects, set a precedent for every other officer involved shooting where oh, families yeah. and a public outcry is going to lead you to have to do this? Or why this one in particular? Thank you. But, uh, the policy that we have in place says that the video will be released at the conclusion of the criminal investigation. However, if there is a greater good for that video to be released before that time, then I, as a police chief, have the right to make that decision. Uh, in this case, the criminal investigation is not complete. And there has been a, a great deal of, of concern in the community, and, and rightfully so. We have an individual uh, that did not have a firearm on his person or in the vehicle. Although, from the video, it does look like he may be trying to demonstrate that he did have a weapon. It's difficult to say. So, we will look at all of those, those things um, in this investigation. But that's why I made the decision today to release the video. Uh, again, I was going to release it last Friday after the family viewed it until the, thing, the incident, the terrible tragedy happened in Dallas. Speaking of releasing it today, you know there's another protest scheduled for 
this evening that's supposed to end right here. They want to speak to you specifically. Do you have any concerns that, you know, we're two hours away from that? I mean, will this release have any effect on that? We know that there's a protest scheduled for tonight at 6 p.m. I don't know what the release of this video will will do to the people that are out there emotionally. As you know, there was a previous video that was already released um, that only covered the last two rounds, which uh, sparked uh, some emotion. But unfortunately, I said to the media then, that, that video was from 150 feet and really didn't show some of the movements that people needed to see. And, and so I wanted to show that today and point that out. Um, again, not for the purpose of defending, but for the purpose of allowing people to see it. And I don't know what impact that's going to have on the, on the community. There may be some that see the initial part of this video and it may satisfy concerns. There may be others that look at the last part of the video and say, that was too much. And, and I understand that. And so regardless of the, the tensions, regardless of the protest, I believe it's the right thing to do to release that video uh, today. Again, time between the second and third shot and the third and fourth shots that had passed before those shots I think a lot of the questions we're hearing is, in that time, could officers have pulled out a taser? Has there ever been a case where an officer has initially used a gun and then used a taser, or is that against police policy? It's, it's not against policy to use a taser or less lethal after you've made the decision to use deadly force. But it really is a judgment on the part of the officer. At the time, it has to be based on the threat that may be presented, or at least perceived threat. And then, again, the time that's uh, allowed, the distance uh, between the individual and the officer, whether there's cover. And um, those things will be looked at as part of the, this investigation. Could another level of, of force been utilized after the first two rounds were fired? Uh, you'll know that there was about uh, four seconds between the individual shot and the time that he rolled over on his back. There's about three seconds uh, that occurred before he reached and was shot. Now the, fourth and final round, there was a, a much longer period of time, 12 <coughs> seconds, and I would imagine people are going to be asking the question, isn't there something that could have been done during that 12 seconds outside of using the shotgun? That is the very question I have, and that's the very question that will be asked and answered in this investigation, and that will be what I make my decision on. Remind us who's going to. Are going to release the officers' names involved in this? Yes, the, as you know, the, the two officers involved in the shooting, uh, there has been a, a request to have those officers' names um, provided. Uh, unfortunately, as a result of us monitoring social media and a number of other sites, um, there's been a lot of tension, a lot of uh, things said over social media about the officers involved, demanding to know who they are so that certain things might happen to them. And I know that I don't want anything to happen in our city like it happened in Dallas. But quite frankly, I've been concerned about the safety of our officers, which is why we made the decision after Dallas to double up all of our units. And we are going to do that again today. I fully understand and recognize there are people out there that truly hate cops, just like Micah Johnson did in Dallas. I worry about their safety. I worry that this vehicle is going to, or this video could could spark some emotions in people that may try to carry out a threat on officers. I'm hoping that isn't the case, but I fully understand that, especially in today's environment. Have the officers received death threats? Uh, not death threats not directly, uh, because they don't know who these individuals are. But there have been threats made over social media that have been reviewed by our legal advisor, who has advised me based on the, that information he has gathered from our intelligence unit, to not release the names at this time. But at point, some point, when we believe the threat has lessened, we will. How much time passed uh, from the uh, complaint about the uh, citizen walking around with the rifle and uh, when he gained their attention in his truck? I believe the time frame was about 12 minutes from the time they made contact uh, with the, the citizen, the time they were dispatched, to the time they made contact with the individual uh, in the Clinton Clovis area. So the time they drove over to another location, searched on foot briefly, and then drove from there over to Shields and Sunnyside. It was, I believe, about a 12-minute time lapse, if I'm not, uh, not mistaken. Well, you talked in the video about what was in his hand. What was recovered? 
It turned out to be a four inch by four inch clear plastic um, with some type of what appeared to be clay material in there inside that was moldable by squeezing it. We don't know what that is. We're having it tested, um, and that's part of the results of the uh, of the DOJ lab. Going back to Catherine's question, can you tell us a little bit about the officers involved? I know we have, you know, how long they've been veterans. Have they ever been involved in officer involved shootings? The uh, the officer okay. who fired the initial rounds, the two and then the one on the ground. He's a 20-year veteran of the Fresno Police Department. He's uh, currently has been working as a field training officer. Uh, he has never been involved in an officer-involved shooting.